This is the official EFL podcast. Hello and welcome to the preview show. Just the championship to focus on this week, but we've still got a full complement of EFL experts on the show. They are former Reading captain and now Leighton Orient captain Joby Makanov, former Birmingham and Wolves centre-back Roger Johnson, and he's featured at many different clubs across the EFL, so being a debutant on this show won't be something new to him. Colchester United player coach Jamal Campbell-Rice also joins us. Firstly, guys, let's focus on the early kickoff on Saturday and what a game it is to look forward to the East Midlands derby between Nottingham Forest and Derby. Joby, we we talked about some of the fiercest rivalries in football the last time you were on the show. This one ranks right up there, doesn't it? Oh, most definitely. I think uh, when you look at the history of both clubs, you don't have to look at the characters like, you know, Brian Clark and the success he had at, at both clubs. You know, two massive, massive football clubs there with, with great ambition. That are not quite where they want to be at the moment, but um, you know, in terms of the rivalry, it, it runs really, really deep. You know, given the location of, of both teams, and I think for me, you know, if you're talking about rivalries, it's certainly up there for the biggest in the championship. Um, you know, you, we spoke about Swansea and Cardiff, but you know, I'm sure that every Derby and Forest fan would argue this is just as big as that. So. You know, a massive game that, you know, we're all looking forward to. Yeah, Roger, let's look at the home side, first of all. Fifth in the table with a game in hand. How impressed have you been with the way in which they've started the season? They they sort of look the real deal now, don't they? They certainly do. They certainly do. I mean, with the game in hand, how they're sitting in the table, they look very, very strong. I mean, how they've performed over the last sort of four or five games. Uh, yeah, they've lost a couple, but they've also won a couple. Um, well, I've been impressed with the the clean sheets they seem to be getting um, and Lamucci's got them playing really well so um, yeah sat sat in fifth with a game in hand and going into an international break um, it's perfect I'd say Yeah Jamal Sebri Lamucci seems to be a very popular figure as well with the fans and obviously he's got his side performing how important is that to have everyone pulling in the same direction at a club? Yeah massive um, I think it's a club like Forest. I think is vitally important with their, with their fan base it you get everybody on the side, you know. The the owners seem to have back back Lamucci. They brought in some 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 very very good players, Albert Adoma and, and Amiobi. They've done really well for him. I just think it's huge now for a club like Forest, who have over the last few years they could say that they've really disappointed, but they've started the season very well and they have found themselves right up there, giving themselves a great chance. Yeah, Joby, obviously not looking as positive for Derby at the minute, but despite being down in fifteenth, they're They've only, you know, four points away from a playoff spot. How important is it that they they stay in touch before the busy Christmas period? Of course. Yeah, it's crazy, really. You, you know, you hear a lot of, of negativity. I think that comes from the expectation that from everyone at Derby and, and where they really want to be is is right up at the table, pushing for promotion. But you know, it can be a, a, a slow process when a new manager comes in and you know, with his new ideas, his new philosophies, ways of playing, and. You know, I think from their point of view, they'd probably look at the other way and think, quite not being where they want to be, they're only four points away from being in those playoff places. And you only have to look at the table to see how close it is. I think it's those four points from them down in 15th, right up to, to Forest in fifth, that separates sort of 10 or 11 teams. So, you know, if they can get themselves on a run, you know, in and around Christmas is a really, really important time in this league. And if you could just keep yourselves there or thereabouts, again, give themselves a little bit more time you know, the players buying into it as the season goes on and putting yourself in a position to strike, you know, come the new year. And I think if they can do that, you know, they'll fancy their chances in the second half of the season. Joby, do you, do you think the, um, the fans are happy with obviously the manager and how, how, where they are sat in the league at the moment after the Lampard being there and obviously being so close the, the previous two seasons? Yeah, I think it's the story of Derby County in recent years, really, Rogers. Um Again, that expectation, they, they almost assume they should be up at the top of the table because they're a big club, you know, they've got a fantastic fan base. Um, I suppose, you know, in terms of what they've put into the club financially, you know, you would expect a return, you know, to the Premier League at some point. But, you know, we all know it's um, a real tough, tough league to get out of. And, you know, when you do change managers, it, it takes that little bit of time, particularly when it is someone who's new to the league. You know, he's got great experience managing, don't get me wrong, but the championship's a different beast altogether. So, again, I think if they can just get through this little tricky period, you know, the consistency is the key for me. If they can start winning regularly, they sort of win one, lose one, win one, lose one. And I think if they can 
sort that out, then again, second half of the season, despite everyone not being too happy, they could really be one of those teams that comes out the pack. Yeah, Roger, we, we actually saw Derby change things up a little bit last week against Middles. We're going for a diamond, two up top, which looking at the result and the stats seem to work really well. Can it be something as simple as that sometimes, which can click a team into gear, do you think? Sometimes it can be. I mean, it shows the quality that they have actually got, that you can change your shape, because I'm, I'm sure the boys will say, and I'll certainly say, when you when you change a shape, it's not always to, to suit everyone's everyone's game. So it shows the quality they have got, and the, and the diamonds seem to work for them against Middlesbrough, albeit Middlesbrough had a, a man sent off. They got the, they got the win. They got the clean sheet. Yeah, Lawrence Lawrence got got a little brace out of it. So yes, I, I, I believe that they they should they should, probably shouldn't be where they are in the league. Uh, it's a long way to go. Like like Joby just said, there the championships so so hard. It spreads all the way down to 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 fifteenth where they are and four points off it. Um, they'll look. It's a tough game for them. Don't get me wrong, um, but there's no reason why they can't cause an upset. I know Forrest are on form at the moment, but on the back of uh, in their last five, I think they've, they've won three and, and lost two. So yeah, I think it'd be a good game. Yeah, and of course, anyone could beat anyone in this league as well. Jamal, uh, Joby touched on it earlier, but Philip Koku, obviously a manager who's got a lot of experience, but never managed in the championship previously. Do foreign managers who've never experienced this league sometimes just need that time to adapt to the division? Hundred um, percent. I think it's massive that you're given that backing by the board to go and implement your style of play and what you want from the players. Because ultimately, you're going into a new country, a new league that you know really nothing about. So it is always difficult. Unfortunately, we all know in this day and age, you don't always get that time that you so so want need to get a bond with the players, to get a bond with the fans, and to get the, the club moving in the direction that you want. So unfortunately, like you, you need to move in a direction as quickly as possible that the, the board and the fans. Are looking for and ultimately that's that's getting all the players on board with in the style of play that you want with foreign managers they often have different different training methods i know a lot of managers they like doing double sessions and all that where sometimes during the season us english players we're, we're not we're not really used to but i know that a lot of the foreign managers managers implement that but yeah it's, it's difficult but unfortunately for philip cocker at the moment if, if the results aren't going in the right way and after i think roger roger touched on it as well um earlier uh, after the Lampard Lampard era last season, that they're looking for immediate success. So it's, uh, it's going to be tough to follow. Certainly will be tough. Well, Nottingham Forest are looking to win three consecutive games against Derby for the first time since January 1990 when they were under the legendary Brian Clough. And of course, both clubs will be playing for the Brian Clough Trophy as well in this match. Uh, let's move on to the 3pm kickoffs now and Sheffield Wednesday manager Gary Monk takes on his former side, Swansea City, at Hillsborough. Joby, Wednesday looks solid at home, and, and Swansea have obviously got that unbelievable unbeaten record in the league on the road. I'm guessing you're expecting this to be a tight one. Yeah, we're all set for a nil-nil, I think. Uh, but no, all jokes aside, Swansea, except for Wednesday, uh, you know, Gary Monk's got them really, really solid, really well organised. I think the last three games, they've, they've not conceded a goal at home. And so that shows you that it's going to be really tough for Swansea. But, you know, with their away record unbeaten away, it's uh, incredible, really. You know, it's still at this stage of the season. And after a little sticky spell that they had to go through for a few games, they've, they've come out of it, Swansea, with a good couple of results recently to, to get back on track, obviously most notably beating Cardiff in the derby. So I'm sure they'll go into it full of confidence, um, should make for a real good game. You know, two teams that want to be up there and are up there and expect to stay up there for the rest of the season. So I think it'd be a good indicator about which of the two teams have really got it in them to go and stay at that top of the table. Yeah, Wednesday, one of your former teams, of course, Roger. As we mentioned, three clean sheets in a row at Hillsborough for Gary Monk's side. As a defender, how pleasing is that to see for you? It's, it's brilliant. I think I mentioned it on the last podcast. Defenders and keepers pride themselves on on clean sheets, no matter if you've won five four, I'm s I'd still me personally be fuming that we'd conceded four. So I think that's what he's installed there, centre back himself to go free on the spin. They'll they'll certainly be looking to Joby just said there was probably going to be a nil nil draw. Neither of them really concede a lot of goals. I think both of them are up there in the top three, four of goals against. So yeah, it's going to be a, a tight game. It'll be a good one. I'm pleased with Sheffield Wednesday. They 
So it was there or thereabouts, and they're, they're sat pretty in the league at the moment. Just hopefully they can push the, and get, get themselves up this season. Yeah, and fingers crossed it isn't a nil-nil. Jamal, being a former Blade, I think it's fair to say Wednesday fans won't really want your opinion on them. But can you see them <laughs> in, in the mix of promotion this season? Bring that Sheffield derby to the Premier League, maybe. Yeah, I don't think I'm the, I'm the flavour of the month for Wednesday fans, but I have been really impressed with, with how they started the season and you know, they, I think they've got some fantastic football players in there. They've got they've got Barry Bannon in there, who's a who's a lovely footballer. I think they've they've uh, brought in some good acquisitions as well. They brought in uh, Maximo Luongo to complement him, and and Kadeem Harris. I've been really impressed with this season. He's an out and out wide player, and he, he he's he's provided a lot of assists this season already. But yeah, I think they're they're definitely in the mix, and I definitely think that they can they can definitely push for promotion this season. I've been really impressed with how they got going and how they're playing at the moment. Yeah, Joby, we saw that dramatic late win for Swansea, though, last week in injury time at Wigan. We've spoken about this before with, with West Brom previously, but how important is it for a side to have that, you know, that never-say-die attitude in this league? Oh, it's vital. I think if you're talking about being a team that either gets automatic promotion or even gets in the playoffs, you have to have that quality about you and desire to just eke out a result, whether it is nicking a goal to, to get a point or managing to get a winner as they did um, in that last game. And obviously Wigan's a real tough, tough place to go. So, you know, I think that'll give them, you know, a lot of confidence, you know, going away from home somewhere that is notoriously difficult to pick up points. And I'm sure, you know, it's something they'll, they'll take with them in there the next part of the season. Roger, we, we've talked about that away record as well just now, but how vital could that be if they are to sustain this run, of course? Very vital. I mean, the way, again, the lads will say away form is, is if you can string your away form together, sort of the home is supposed to take care of itself. Stringing a, a, a really good, decent away away run of games, I think that's the difference come the end of the season, whether, whether, you're, whether you're up there or not. They're up there. As we say, their, their form away from home is is very, very good. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough one because, like I said earlier, Sheffield Wednesday don't actually concede a lot of goals, especially on the back of these three clean sheets. It's going to be a, a tough ask for him. Jamal, in his pre-match press conference uh, today, Steve Cooper responded, obviously, with to being asked if Swansea are promotion contenders using the old cliche, you know, we're taking it one game at a time. Is that something which managers really are saying to their players or, or is it just, you know, trying to play it down when, when you're up there fighting for promotion? I think, you have, I think managers are always quietly confident, but you don't want to put yourself under added pressure, you know. You always play it down to the press and the media and all the rest of it because otherwise you come out saying the wrong thing and then there's there's expectations that you don't really want on your shoulders. Also, I think it's, it's massive that you just keep everyone in, in and around the club, everyone's feet on the ground. You don't want people getting carried away with themselves because it's, it, it's easily done, you know. Um, you get a couple of results and, and then everybody thinks everything, everything's happy as Larry and it's not like every game's a tough game and, and the boys will tell you that like home and away, people want to come and they want to take your record, whatever it is. So it's, it's, it's vitally important that you just keep everyone grounded. Yeah, well, the last time that Swansea had an away run as good as this was all the way back in 2008 when Gary Monk was, of course, still playing for them. Finally, now we're moving on to the to Swansea's South Wales rivals and Sunday's game with Cardiff taking on Bristol City, one of your former teams, Cardiff, of course. We talked last time with you about the importance of the South Wales derby, but this also is an intense rivalry, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big, big one. You know, whenever you're uh, playing for Cardiff, you know, you're not only playing for, for Cardiff City, you know, you're playing for Wales, you know, particularly against the majority of the other teams, you know, obviously that are English and carry that with them wherever they go. And it really intensifies the atmosphere. They were fantastic, fantastic fans. You know, some of the best I've, I've played for and... Again, being so close, you know, we've spoken about a couple of the other big rivalries in the league. This, for me, is up there as well because of that added significance of the England versus Wales. And also the fact that both teams, again, you know, Cardiff having been up to the Premier League and come down and, and Bristol trying to get up now, it certainly adds to the spice for the occasion. And, and there'll be a crack atmosphere, I'm sure. And really, really good game and, and one that I'm sure everyone's looking forward to. You know, the, the Welsh want to get one over on the English and, of course, the English want to get one over on the Welsh. So all the makings for a really good game. Yeah, Roger, we spoke about this with Derby, of course, earlier in the podcast, but Cardiff in a similar position, down in 14th, but only four points off a playoff spot. Going into the international break, it's vital they keep in touch, isn't it? It is, massively. And they'll want to, obviously, have come in, coming down our season and sat where they are in the league. It, it, it doesn't look too good if you just stare at the league, but like, like you say there, I mean, they're, they're four points off it. 
and they'll hundred percent Warnock will be be looking to, to to win this game. And I think I said it on the last one as well, Bristol City going away to, to Barnsley. It was it's not a not an easy game when I mean, we said about maybe they if they want to show their card and, and, and be contenders this season that they're the sort of games you need to go and win them. They were sat in the top six and, and they're playing bottom of the league, but that's that's the championship. But certainly at home I played in these derbies for Cardiff. They're they're, they're feisty feisty events, televised. So uh, it's got all the makings of a of, of a great game. Because as, as the question the question you asked that, that, that Cardiff will certainly be looking to to keep in touch with that with that top six going into the the, the break that's coming up. And Bristol City will probably be disappointed about the 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 two two draw with with Barnsley last time out. So they want to put that right. Obviously, like Joby said, there it's England v Wales. So um, Always, always a good event. Yeah, late drama, as you say. I talked well last week. Uh, Jamal, you scored your first goal for Bristol City when you, you faced Cardiff earlier in your career. Uh, how special can the atmosphere be in these games? And what are your memories of that day? Well, I actually made my debut um, against Cardiff uh, for Bristol City and we got we got spanked 6-0. I think I played that. Well. <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, you, 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 you couldn't wait to say that, could you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and that, that honestly, that wasn't nice. And I remember having like fans on the street, like like that. That I'd only been at the club like two days, and just getting just getting battered for it. But then on the flip side, I remember scoring a goal that we uh, at Ashton Gate, and we beat them three yeah, nil. And it's almost you gone. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that as well. Um, yeah, it's almost it's almost like you're, you're a hero. Like you've gone from a villain to being a hero. Like the, the Cardiff fans and the Bristol City fans are so passionate about that game. And I think uh, Joby touched on it. It's like England v Wells, and the, it's a it's a massive game for for for, for them both sets of fans, and they uh, they they really get behind their team. So. To get the bragging rights is, is a massive, massive thing. Yeah, contrast of emotions for you there, I guess. Uh, Joby, we, we've seen Bristol City get closer and closer to a playoff position in recent seasons. They're currently in in the top six. And do they have what it takes to stay there from what, what you've seen so far, do you think? Yeah, I think they do. And I think this is a season where they have to. You know, I think they've made real good progress under Lee Johnson, you know, from, from when he first came in. Um, you know, eighth last year, just missing out, you know, 11th the season before. So there is a a steady progression and, and I'm one for, for giving managers a chance to build and, you know, things do take time and I think they've backed him. I think this is the season they've, they've certainly got to get in the playoffs. Once you're in there, it, it can be a bit of a lottery. Um, but I, I had the start of the season for a team that, that should be there. You know, they've got that bit of experience now. You know, he's getting more experienced, to, you know, at, at every game and, you know, very comfortable at this level as a manager. And they've also managed to bring in some players that have, you know, very much been there, done it. I think Ashley Williams has been a, a real big signing for them. You know, he's just re-signed now to the end of the season. And I think having that experience, you know, when it really gets to the business end of the season could really help them, you know, this time around, really. So, um, you know, if you're looking at them statistically, they probably conceded a few too many goals. They've drawn a few too many games. And again, we're talking about fine margins here. But, you know, as the season goes on, if they can just cut out a few of those goals conceded and change a few of them draws into wins and it really changes the picture and you know should should keep them in the playoffs where I expect them to be you know come the end of the season yeah like we said Roger it's on the Sunday as well so the last game before the international break as well does that ramp up the pressure on on both teams as well knowing what the result will mean for them in the table going into that break it always does I always found going into the international break that you don't want that. I, 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 when when we lost the game, I always won a game like on the Tuesday just to put Saturday's game right. So going into a break where you've you've got two weeks to wait before you can put that that, that loss if it is a loss right. Uh, it's a long time, so it does. I don't know if the boys agree, but that, that that's for me that it's so important winning that game on or getting a clean sheet in that game. Something to something to build on that you can actually enjoy your break, not thinking about getting battered three or four nil or or losing. So it does it does ramp up the pressure and I think both both sides will will, will think that. Um I mean it should be a it should be a, a goal fest. I mean the, the, the records at um from from the goal scorers for, for for both sides with rules on five and uh, Ryman on on six for for Bristol City. Everyone's chipping in. Um and, and like Joby said there, they're both probably conceding too many goals. Um, and 
that's probably why Cardiff Cardiff are down there. Yeah, they're scoring a few, but they're uh, they're, they're conceding too many. But just to the, back to the original question, yeah, both managers, both sets of players will want to win this game just to go and enjoy their, their break wherever they may be going. To, to jump in on that point, obviously Roger made a, a real good point about that period in between. You know, you're so used to playing a lot of games in the championship. It's quite strange when you have that international break because it is a prolonged period that you're, you're just not used to. And I think given what's at stake, you know, we, we've spoken about, you know, a whole city really having to wait another couple of weeks until the next game. So... You know, there's an awful lot riding on it and you know it, it can be a long a long couple of weeks if you come off it off the back of a, a bad result in, in such a big game. Joby as well, does it make a difference that the match is on the Sunday as well with the fact that they can see how every other side's got on? Does it ramp that pressure up even higher for the players, do you think? I think it gives you a good chance to really know um, you know, where you can get. Again, you know, we we've spoken about it numerous times. It's really hard, you know, that's why we, we always get the, the next game at a time, but you really have to be like that in the championship and you know, you set yourself mini targets as you go, you know, throughout the season and you know, again, knowing exactly where you can be at the end of the day, you know, can be a little target you can set yourself. So um, I'm sure, you know, with Bristol looking ahead of them, you know, they want to be trying to get automatic promotion and depend on other results. They they could be even closer to it. You know, they're not far off now. I think they're only three points outside that. So, you know, that could be a realistic target for them, you know, come match day that, you know, they want to get themselves in them automatic places. And, and Jamal, Cardiff have, have scored seven goals from set pieces this season, one of the best in the league. And one of Bristol City's weaknesses is, of course, conceding from corners. I think they've conceded five so far this season from corners. How much will Lee Johnson be aware of that going into the match? And what will he, what will he be doing on the training pitch to, to combat it? Yeah, Lee Johnson, having played with him, he's a, he was a, tried to be a perfectionist as a player. I can imagine he's even worse now as a manager that, He'll want to make things right on the training ground and that will really annoy him that they're conceding goals like that from set pieces. And we all know that Neil Warnock, he, he's massive on set pieces and having the centre-halves come up and, and cause problems in, in, in the box. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely sure that Lee Johnson will be making them aware of that, that it could be a game of set pieces and in both boxes that where Bristol have to be very, very good, even better than what they're, what they're used to. Well, we always find some great stats on Neil Warnock. Here's this week's. Warnock hasn't ended on the losing side at home to Bristol City since May 2008, which was a championship playoff semi-final when he was in charge at Crystal Palace. Current Bristol City boss Lee Johnson featured that day while they were managed by his dad, Gary, of course. And we'll leave you with that. Guys, thanks for your time this week and enjoy your weekends. No worries, Cheers, top ben. man. Cheers, Ben. Top man, boys. Well done. The official EFL podcast. The best reaction to all the match action. Available every week.